Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about UML, use case diagram and use case scenario. We will be discussing what it is, why is it needed, and how to create it. So, without further ado, let's get started. Before we get into use case, let's quickly go over what a UML is. Unified Modeling Language, UML for short, is a standardized modeling language, enabling developers to specify, visualize, construct, and document artifacts of a software system. Thus, UML makes these artifacts scalable, secure, and robust in execution. UML is an important aspect, involved in object-oriented software development. It uses graphic notation, to create visual models of software systems. UML has two types of diagrams, when it comes to modeling. One is behavioral models, which focuses on the functionality of a system, or simply, what the system does. Then we have the structure models, which focuses on the technical details, like, how the system functions. Use case falls under the, behavioral model category, its purpose is to, capture the functionality of the system from the user's standpoint. A use case diagram, consists of multiple use cases, and each use case represents, the smallest unit of functionality and it is typically a single functionality, as seen by the users. In order to create a use case diagram, it's a must that you understand, what these symbols represent. The first one we look at, is the actor symbol. Drawn as a stickman, it's a user who interacts with, some features of a system. For example, a customer, a manager, etc. Keep in mind, whenever an actor is defined, it should never be defined as an individual, it should be defined as a role. For example, if a manager's name is John, does not mean that an actor, that represents him on the diagram, needs to be named after him. Instead, that actor must be labeled after his manager role. Next is the use case symbol, one of the most important symbols. It's drawn as an oval shape. It represents a feature of the system, which is formulated as a goal to be accomplished by the system. For example, booking a flight. Moving on to association, which is drawn as a straight line, defines the relationship, between an actor, and the use case. It indicates that there is an interaction happening, between actor, and use case. Let's look at these other refinements of relationships. The include relationship symbol, represents that one use case, is dependent on another use case. For example, in order to buy an online product, user needs to be logged into that website first. The extend relationship, can be applied in two situations. Either when one use case is optional, or when one use case is, a specific version of another case. For example, having the option of making a payment, through a credit card, or using an online payment method, such as, PayPal or Apple Pay, and etc. Finally, there's the generalization, which is used to indicate, if an element in the system, is a generic version of another element. We will cover the example for it, in a few moments. Now, let's go ahead and, create our own use case diagram. There are many UML tools out there, that you can choose from, in our case, we'll be using GenMyModel. For this diagram, we'll be using the scenario, of a user purchasing airline tickets online, by logging into their account. Their options for payments are either credit card or any online payment service. For the sake of this video, we will be creating a very basic diagram, that will be super easy to follow along, so, let's get started. In order to begin, we'll first have to create and name our project. Once we see the blank surface, our diagram is ready to be created. The first element we'll be adding here, is the package, which represents the system. Once the system is ready, next thing we're going to do here is, add an actor. It will be representing the user or customer. Now that we have our user, next thing we're going to do is, add our first use case, in order to symbolize, the account login. Let's add another use case, to represent, purchasing tickets. As it says in the scenario, we're going to add use cases that, represents the payment. We'll go ahead, and add a use case for, making payment and, to symbolize user's payment options. We'll be adding two more use cases, for the specific types of payments, user is allowed. One for credit card payment, and another for, online payment services, like PayPal, Venmo, etc. Now that we have our user, and, use cases, we're ready to start drawing the sequence, meaning, connect our user to the use cases. We will use an association line, to connect our user with their tasks, in order to complete this process. First, let's connect the user, with their first task, which is to log into their account. Make sure to label the association appropriately, with the action performed, as shown here. Similarly, we're going to connect the user, with their other tasks. 
purchasing the tickets, and making the payment. Next thing we're going to do here is, symbolize that, the task of purchasing tickets, comes after the task of, user login to their account. We'll be using, the include sequence to represent, that user first needs to log in, in order to, purchase the airline tickets. Since there are, two specific use cases, for making payment, we would need to, symbolize that as well. We will be using, the extend sequence, in order to show, credit card payment, and PayPal payment, are extensions of, the main use case, for making the payment. Lastly, we'll be looking at, how the generalization symbol, comes into play. Now, let's say that, a manager is trying to log into the system, which also makes them a user. In order to symbolize that, we'll add two more actors, label them as manager, and user. After that, we simply use the generalize sequence arrow, to show that, even though the manager, and the customer, have different roles in the system, they both are still considered, a user. That completes our use case diagram. This shows you, how simple it is, to create a UML use case diagram, using any given scenario. Let's move on, now that we covered, use case diagram, we'll now talk about, use case scenarios. We know that a use case, represents the actions that are required, to enable or, abandon the goal. It contains multiple paths, that can be taken by any user, at any one time. A use case scenario is a single path through the use case. That being said, why do we need, use case scenario? Well, you might have noticed that, the use case diagram, we just created, does not contain enough information, to accurately describe, what each feature of a system does. Every use case in the diagram, is accompanied by, a scenario. Use case scenarios, are based on use case diagrams, and it describes, the interactions between the, user, and the system. Before we go ahead, and create our, use case scenario, it's important to understand, the template it follows. Now, there's no specific template, but every template, does contain the main factors, that are needed. You can either go with, the template shown here, or pick one, that you prefer. Keep in mind, that it should always contain, actors, or the user, a system, or the process, that's required to reach, the final outcome, and a goal, which is the, successful user outcome. Now, let's take that template, and create our own, use case scenario. Even though, there are tools out there, for creating use case scenario, there is no specific tool, that is required, to create this scenario, since it can simply be created, on Word document, Excel, and, etc. In this case, we'll be using a Word document. To start off, the use case that, we're going to be focusing on, is purchasing flight tickets, from the use case diagram, we just created earlier. Once we have our, use case name down, let's go ahead, and, start filling out, rest of the, required elements. Author is, the creator of the scenario, here's where you will, put your own name, or sometimes, your collaborative partner's name, as well. Since, this is the first time, this scenario is being created, it doesn't have a last revised date, so in this case, we can go ahead, and put the date, it was first created. Moving on, to actors. Here we will put the actor, that is interacting with, all the use cases, which is the customer, as we know from our, use case diagram. The uses, basically means, include sequence, which indicates what use cases are included. As we seen, in our diagram, it is the login account, since it needs to happen, before a flight ticket, is purchased. Looking at, the extend, if you recall from, our diagram, the only two extend relationships, we had on there, was regarding the payment. So, in this case, we can either, leave it empty, or, simply put, nil. For the, preconditions, we can list out a few, but, we should input, the most relevant one. In this case, we'll say, airline tickets information, is available in the system. Given the fact, that without that information, it will be, logically impossible, to purchase flight tickets. Now, we can begin, with the basic, scenario steps. We'll be filling it out, as we go along. Let's go ahead, and fill out, our first, main scenario, which is, the system retrieves, the flight tickets information, and, displays them, to the customer. Following up, the customer picks, their preferred airline, and, selects the date, and, time for the flight. Next, the customer, adds the purchase information, to their, checkout screen. Then, the system, checks for, availability. If available, the system then, updates the, checkout screen. 
After that, the customer proceeds to checkout. Next, the system displays the checkout overview on the screen. And finally, the customer receives their bill of purchase along with the flight itinerary through email. Once the main scenarios have been filled out, we're going to focus on the error conditions here. Looking at the main scenarios, we would have to come up with a logical error that might take place. The obvious one would be if the flight isn't available, the customer is notified by the system that the flight they chose is not available. There could be many other error conditions, but for the sake of this video, that's the only one we'll go with. Let's take a look at the other scenarios. It's used for showing alternative paths through the system that requires a slightly different set of steps. In this case, we will be expanding the use case scenario just to show a quick example. Let's say that the customer wants to change their payment method. So, for that, we can say the customer proceeds to checkout and the system displays the checkout overview on the screen, but the customer wants to go back and change their payment method. Once the customer makes the change, the system prompts the customer back to the checkout overview screen. From there, the steps would continue normally as the main. Last thing here is the post conditions, which is basically the end goal for this scenario. So we'll say purchase is completed and the system follows up with the customer. Since the customer would still need some additional info like departing gate number and etc. Now that we have all the elements filled out that will wrap up this use case scenario here. To summarize, we covered UML, what it is and what it does. Along with that, we went through use case diagram and use case scenario. We discussed what they do, why they are needed and how they are performed in simple, easy to follow steps. Remember to follow the appropriate symbols and use an appropriate template when creating use case diagrams and scenarios. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave us a like, share with people who may benefit from it, as well as comment below what other topics you'd like us to cover and please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our latest videos. We offer a training, staffing and services. Contact us at 847-350-9034 for a free career consulting session. See you soon.